Good morning. I have uh, generated a list of points that resemble, well, they're meant to be 10 events for each of 40 Hubble observers. I think that's an approximation. Um, their maximum rapidity is two. I can change that and uh, say max rapidity is one and say there's only 10 uh, Hubble observers and let's give them uh, 50 events per Hubble observer and we'll see something that looks like that. Fifth, whoa, 50 events per Hubble observer? That looks like... Oh no, okay. It wasn't finished yet. Alright, and then what happened here? Some kind of parameter change I need to make right here instead of negative 2. I need to make that negative max rapidity so that it, there we go, now it's nice and symmetrical. And I think I want just twice that many observers. So instead of 10 Hubble observers, I'll go with 20. Is that really 10? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I've got 12 there. Um, that's interesting. It's not symmetrical very much, is it? going to add a parameter here called delta rapidity, which is max rapidity divided by um, n hub observers. And actually, I want to double this because I want half of the Hubble observers going one way and half of the other going the other way. So this here, I can go ahead and use that delta rapidity in this spot. But more importantly, I want to make sure that delta rapidity is put here. And not only that, I'm going to make it negative delta rapidity. Um, actually, I don't want to do it negative delta rapidity, do I? Um, I'm not sure. Let's just make it positive for now. Um, I've got an idea. Here, let's put i less than or equal to n Hubble observers. I don't think, um, it's just, I get confused around issues of lists. Boy, it just really doesn't want to finish doing this calculation today. So what's going on here? Okay, it never finished um, when I put delta rapidity in there, but it does finish when I put 0.1. So maybe the issue is it's trying to keep track of the entire form, um, which is a complex, a complex thing. And when I put a decimal in there, it it does a nice approximation. It does a reasonable approximation, and it'll get it quickly. Okay, yeah, that seems to be the case. Just simply by adding a decimal there, it made Mathematica figure it out much quicker. Now, ideally, I would like to connect lines from the bottom to the top here and along each uh, coordinate here. Um, but for that, I need to learn to manipulate this list uh, quite a bit, and for that purpose, I'm going to make the list much, much smaller, with uh, maybe number of number of Hubble observers being, say, four, maybe three events per Hubble observer being four. Let's see what that looks like. That's barely even barely even noticeable, but so let's make. Uh, events be six and number of number of Hubble observers be six. Okay, that kind of looks right. Um, so what I'm going to do is try to take a look at the form of that list. For instance, let's see if we can pick out just the first six terms of that list. The Mathematica documentation has a pretty big group of things that you can do with list and list commands such as range, array, 
table. And the table is the one I'm kind of focusing on. They have something called sow and reap. I've got a function called random choice, which uh, I guess grabs something, a random choice out of a list. This one has six elements, one, two, three, four, five, six. Apply makes the elements the, of a list the arguments of a function. So if I did apply f, the function f to 1, 2, and 3, it would return what? Well, f had better be a function of three different variables there, I guess. But if you have a nested list, you can actually get it to do f of the first thing, then followed by f of the second thing, followed by f of the third thing, and then what in the world? So this is applying at level one. So it, we would be applying that function to the list at that level. That could be very useful for what I'm trying to do. So apply makes the elements of a list this way, and then we use this level applying the nested list at level one, I'm thinking it might be a situation where I might have a line with a set of points, comma, line with another set of points. And I might want to apply the Lorentz transform to all the points in both graphics primitives. Could I apply it at level one? Um, I don't know. It might be something to try, but right now I'd rather have something a little more clear map applies function to the elements of a list and this is more what I was expecting when I saw that first notation um, map f with 1 2 3 and 4 it'll go f of 1 f of 2 f of 3 f of 4 this might be more useful than apply for a nested list map can apply f at any or any level or multiple levels so here we've got f with 1 comma 2, 3 comma 4, 5 comma 6, and it's applied at level 2. And we see it is f of 1, f of 2, f of 3, f of 4, f of 5, f of 6. But if it's applied um, 2 without the brackets, well, f, well, it's it's applied at multi they're applying f of one f of two and then f of f of one comma f of two what that that could not possibly be of any use could it because if f is a function of one variable then why would you want to apply it f of two variables oh no it's f of parentheses f of one f oh that's so weird here's a do and do works with a list by just taking the taking the entire list and putting plugging it into i and then doing whatever it says to do print 1 comma log 2 of 1 is 2 to the 0 power is 1 and 2 2 to the first power is 2 4 2 to the second power is 4 and 8 2 to the third power is 8. Table log 2i, comma i list. So here we're not printing two things. We're just printing the 0, 1, 2, 3. Sum k, k list. Um, so we're taking, we are just changed it from an i to a k because that's a dummy variable. Um, and it's taking the sum of 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8. Part can be used to get elements of a list. List part 3 is 4. You get multiple parts by specifying a list of parts. List 1 comma negative 1. Um, that is getting really close to what we want using span one 
semicolon, semicolon, negative 1. Why negative 1? Does that mean that the first element of the list is here and the negative first element in the list is there? It must be. It's different. And then 1, semicolon, semicolon, negative 1, semicolon, semicolon, 2. Uh, I can see 1 and 3 there. 1 and 3. That does not make sense. Still, I'm curious, so I'm going to try group 1 equals group 1, semicolon, semicolon, 6, and see what that does. And instead of point this being point size small, I'm going to put group 1 there and see what dots show up, if any. None. Wait, no, it did. It's down below. Yeah, it's giving 1, 2, 3. I better make the point size point size large so I can see them. There's uh, three dots. Um, there should have been six, at least. That's strange. Oh, there are six there. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's showing a small number of them because why? Because of the... Um, Okay, by doing line group 1 through 7, then line group 8 through 14, then line group 15 through 21, it does look like I can get lines representing those uh, those uh, world lines for those, those objects. And there you can see them kind of superimposed on the, with the points. But I also want to get lines coming this way along along there. So how am I going to do that? So if this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this would be 2, 9, 2, 9, more than uh, plus 7, plus 7, plus 7, plus 7, plus 7. Let's see if we can get. Um, a line connecting connecting group and then we'll have two comma nine comma uh, comma sixteen comma twenty three thirty thirty seven forty four fifty one fifty eight put curly brackets around that thing and boom we have it and we can turn that list into a table by saying 3 plus 7i where i goes from 0 to 8 or a table with 4 plus 7i going from 0 to 8 so then what i want to do is take those numbers and tie them to the number of hubble observers and the events per hubble observer so that um, it will uh, generate them on the fly rather than having to recalculate them every time. All right, I'm gonna try to create Hubble world lines and uh, Hubble Hubble uh, tau lines, Hubble timelines. But first I wanna fix events per Hubble observer by changing something down here because actually it says six, but it's creating seven. Why is that? Because we're starting from 0 and we're going to 1 by e per hub observer. And I think one good way of changing that is just to go e per hub observer minus 1 down here. And that would make it so we have the correct number of events per Hubble observer. And then here, instead of 7, I'm just going to put E per hub observer. And the reason I couldn't put, and then I'll just go ahead and, no, I won't. E, yeah. It was 7. Uh, now I'm changing it to 6. Something like that. I times 7. E per hub observer plus 
um, and this is going to be n hub observers n hub observers is that right actually I think it's just the opposite so this should go here this should go here and this should go e per hub observers well we'll see um, and this should have I going from 0 to n hub observers. Uh, this is again kind of strange. Anyway, let's just see what happens here. It probably won't work right, um, but we'll just kind of get rid of those two lines and replace that with Hubble world lines comma Let's see what happens well it really wants me makes me want to fix my loop um, related to this uh, concatenation routine here for instance how about instead of starting at i equals 0 let's go from i equals 1 and see what happens here hey that that's perfect how many Hubble observers did I ask for I asked for six Hubble observers and how many did it give me one two three four five six seven exactly one more than I asked for so yeah let's call this our Euclidean observer and these will be our Hubble observers that sounds good then we'll have six Hubble observers and one Euclidean observer so that table of Hubble world lines works very well let's make another table called is Hubble Cosmo timelines appropriate uh, for the cosmological time um, I, I don't like the term cosmological time but that's what they refer to it as because cosmological time implies that somehow there is some kind of universal time through the cosmos which is not true obviously um, but I'm gonna use it anyway ironically um, so maybe you know what how about just call it ironic um, ironic cosmological time because it is because when it was originally introduced by Milne as cosmological time he was trying to make an ironic point point. and again we're going to name these with a table line group and this time our group is going to consist of actually we're going to do another table inside here um, table and and in this table we're gonna go 1 plus events per Hubble observer times I with um, I going from from 0 to n hub observers and that is gonna take and then we're going to have k go from that goes over here with that helpful red carrot um, we're going to have k go from 0 to events per hubber let's make it go from 1 to e per hub observer do we really have six Z one two three four five six yes yeah. so then I want that to go from one to e per hub observer and then I'll take that ironic Cosmo timelines and put that here next to Hubble world lines and see what happens dun 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 moment of truth nothing okay bad sign but it's just because of a missing comma maybe moment of truth aha look at that lovely 
let's see how it smooths up when we uh, increase these numbers. Okay, I'm going to change this to number of Hubble observers uh, 15, no, 16, and events per Hubble observer uh, 12, and see what that looks like. Oh, bad stuff happened. Wow. No, nothing super bad happened. Just some strange things happened along these along these axes. Um, that's strange. It says, I cannot take positions 209 through 220 in this list. Why? Well, that's strange. It's creating a nice smooth graph, but um, some of the coordinates are just not being uh, mapped by the what which part is it it's the uh, it's the Hubble world lines list the uh, doesn't look like the ironic Cosmo timelines are having any issues at all now the reason that I'm calling this ironic cosmological time is because none of these uh, particle observers are going to think that the cos that that the cosmos has an age. This is not the, the age of the cosmos. This line does not represent a common age to the cosmos. It represents the fact that all of those particles reach a certain age at different times. So that's why I call it an ironic cosmological time rather than cosmological time. Because as long as we have these particles all moving in different directions, then they can't share a common cosmological time. They are almost by definition not sharing a co common cosmological time because of the special relativity at play and the Lorentz transformations and the relativity of simultaneity. All right, I've made some good progress this video, so thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next video. I'm just going to say ta-ta-ta-ta.